EPA documents for the Tesla Cybertruck were recently published, which reveal a few exciting details about the truck's battery pack, including confirming the pack voltage, capacity, and energy density. Follow along as I compare how Tesla's second generation 4680 battery cells and structural pack has improved since generation one, and also make sure that you stick around to the end of the video as I discuss how the Cybertruck's 800 volt architecture is able to charge on a 400 volt charger. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. The Cybertruck is built using not only Tesla's second generation of 4680 battery cells, which are 10% more energy dense than the first generation cells, but the truck also includes a second generation structural battery pack design as well. At Tesla's previous battery day event, it was revealed that their structural battery pack design should lead to an increase in range and that when you combine the benefits of the 4680 batteries, the structural battery pack and underbody castings, it should lead to a 10% mass reduction and a 14% range increase opportunity. However, as was made very clear when Tesla released the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y. Once again, that was equipped with their first generation of 4680 batteries and a structural battery pack. That vehicle had a low amount of range due to a lower than expected energy density of the battery cells itself and very likely a less than optimized version of a structural battery pack. So these benefits that Tesla mentioned at battery day have not been fully realized just yet. But the Tesla Cybertruck once again, has a second generation version of not only the structural battery pack itself, but the 4680 batteries. So there should be an improvement on that. As I have reported previously, the 18650 cells used in the Tesla Model S and X and the 2170 battery cells used in the Model 3 and Model Y have a higher cell level energy density than the first generation 4680 battery cells made by Tesla. Beyond cell level energy density, when it comes to pack level energy density, which in many ways is more important, although there is no official number for the pack level energy density of the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y's battery pack, Based on the best available data, I estimate that that battery pack had an energy density of around 158 watt hours per kilogram. As this chart illustrates, if my estimate is correct for the first generation structural battery pack energy density, this is quite a bit less than the non-structural battery pack versions found in other Tesla vehicles with the 2170 battery cells or the 18650 cells. However, moving from the first generation to the second generation design that's found in the Cybertruck, once again, we know as Drew Baglino mentioned that the new Cyber cells used in the Cybertruck are 10% more energy dense than the previous first generation 4680 battery cells, which means it's very possible that the cell level energy density of Tesla's second generation 4680 battery cells is greater than the 2170 battery cells. This is based on a 10% improvement over a number that 244 watt hours per kilogram um, cell level energy density calculation that was previously shared by the limiting factor on YouTube. However, once again, beyond cell level energy density, what about pack level energy density for the Cybertruck? Well, thankfully, some EPA documents for the Cybertruck were recently published, and according to this EPA document, the energy density of the Cybertruck's battery pack is 170 watt hours per kilogram. So once again, going back to this chart, while that pack level energy density is greater than my estimates for the first generation battery pack, it's still less than the 2170 equipped Model Y battery pack when it comes to pack level energy density. And this lower pack level energy density number is despite the fact that as I estimate, the cell level energy density of Tesla's new 4680 battery cells should actually be greater than the 2170 cells used in the Model Y. So the reason why this is significant is it still looks like the actual implementation of the structural battery pack, even the next generation version found in the Cybertruck is not quite as optimized as even the 2170 equipped battery pack. Now, of course, it is possible that I'm missing something here and that we're not fully realizing the benefits of a structural battery pack. 
because theoretically, since the battery pack does act as a structural portion of the Cybertruck, even though the pack level energy density is a bit less than the 2170 or 18650 Tesla battery packs, the pack level energy density equivalent may actually be the same. With this new technology, I believe it's very possible we may have to create a new term here. Just as you have the mile per gallon equivalency number when comparing um, the efficiency of a gas burning vehicle to say an electric vehicle, the MPGE, we may have to create the pack level energy density equivalency or the PLED with a small e to really help calculate this. I hope this is something that we can see in the future and I don't actually have enough information to come up with that number just yet but there might be something that we're missing here. We'll have to wait until Tesla releases more information or until the Monroe Associates team um, does a teardown of the vehicle and shares some of that data. With that being said, even with Tesla's second iteration of their structural battery pack design in the Cybertruck, it does appear like Tesla hasn't fully realized all the benefits mentioned at Battery Day because from what Drew Baglino mentioned in Tesla's Q1 2023 investors conference call, it appears like the Cybertruck is a B-level execution or at least close to it for its structural battery pack setup. So I believe this means that Tesla hasn't fully realized all the weight savings benefits of the structural battery pack design just yet and that there's plenty of room for improvement. Now beyond pack level energy density, when it comes to the battery pack capacity, it appears like the previously reported 123 kilowatt hour number for the Cybertruck's battery pack is correct. Because as was calculated by at Troy Testlike in this x.com post, if you convert the 150 amp hour capacity number given by this EPA document for the Cybertruck's battery pack, if you convert that over to kilowatt hours, doing some basic math, multiplying the amp hours by the pack voltage, you come out with 122.4 kilowatt hours for the battery pack size. In addition, although it was already expected, these EPA documents do confirm that the all-wheel drive version and the tri-motor version of the Cybertruck do have the same size battery pack. With that being said, since there is room for improvement, as Tesla optimizes the structural battery pack design and as they increase the energy density of their 4680 battery cells in future generations, this could lead to longer range Cybertrucks. Now the Cybertruck does have an adequate amount of range, up to 340 miles of range for the most efficient version. However, in order to reach 500 miles of range in the future, I believe that that vehicle is going to require um, the range extender to be able to reach that. Because I think originally Tesla may have been thinking about a double stack battery pack for the 500 plus mile range version. Um, because without a range extender or without an extra uh, layer of battery cells somewhere in the vehicle, I don't think 500 plus miles is possible. For example, since the current battery pack size is 122.4 kilowatt hours, and that offers up to 340 miles of range for the all wheel drive version. If Tesla were to increase the pack level energy density by 10%, which could allow for a 10% increase in battery pack capacity, that should lead to around 374 miles of range for the most efficient all wheel drive version of the Cybertruck, which is still quite far from the 500 mile range. And even if the energy density at the pack level increased an additional 10% more than that, and that battery pack went to a bit over 148 kilowatt hours, even then the most efficient version of the Cybertruck would have an estimated 411 miles of range. So a 500 plus mile range version of the Cybertruck is very possible, but it's going to require the range extender. Moving on, the Tesla Cybertruck is the first Tesla vehicle to have an 800 volt architecture, which allows the Cybertruck to charge very quickly. According to Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering, Lars Moravi, the Cybertruck should be able to charge at up to 350 kilowatts at a Tesla V4 supercharger and go from a 15% to 85% state of charge in 18 to 20 minutes, which is extremely impressive. However, one of the problems with an 800 volt electrical architecture for an electric vehicle is the fact that many of the chargers out there, including Tesla's V3, V2, etc. superchargers are designed to charge up uh, vehicles with a 400 volt architecture. So there has to be some kind of workaround in order to quickly charge with these vehicles. 
Thankfully, the Tesla Cybertruck can charge at a 400 volt charger. As Drew Baglino explained in this X.com post, quote, pack splits into two to charge natively on existing 400 volt charging infrastructure. No costly, lossy booster required. So if you connect the Cybertruck to a Tesla V3 supercharger, the battery pack virtually splits into two 400 volt sections, which eliminates the need to use a DC to DC converter to jump up the voltage for charging. Interestingly, the GMC Hummer actually uses a similar technology, but in reverse, as explained by this Motor Trend article, quote, most Ultium battery packs will operate at 400 volts, capable of DC fast charging at up to 250 kilowatts. However, the Hummer EV's two 400 volt battery packs can be virtually wired in series to emulate an 800 volt system during charging, which allows 350 kilowatt chargers to add 100 miles in 10 minutes. While Tesla and GMC have great solutions for accommodating both 400 volt and 800 volt charging, other manufacturers like Lucid and Porsche have less effective solutions. For example, based on this article from the Consumer Reports website, if you connect a Lucid Air, which natively has a 900 plus volt architecture, to a Tesla supercharger, which is designed for vehicles with a 400 volt architecture, it can only receive around 49 kilowatts while charging as compared to the ordinary max charge rate of around 300 kilowatts. Or if you move to the Porsche Taycan, as is explained in this Inside EVs article, you can pay an extra $460 for the optional onboard DC charger package, which allows the Porsche Taycan to charge at 400 volt chargers at up to a 150 kilowatt rate. However, it appears like if you do not have this DC to DC converter, that the vehicle can only charge at around 50 kilowatts when connected to a 400 volt charger. So that's a drastic difference there. And also, I don't know how much energy is lost in the conversion of going from 400 volts to 800 volts. There might be a lot of loss there because specifically Drew Baglino wrote about no costly or lossy booster required. So I assume this to mean that when you boost the voltage from 400 to 800 volts in some kind of DC to DC converter, that a decent amount of energy is lost. So Tesla has completely eliminated the need for some kind of booster when charging at a 400 volt charger. I'm definitely looking forward to more information coming out in the future about the Tesla Cybertruck's battery pack, but I am glad that we're starting to get more information like what I talked about in today's video. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.